Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel and welcome to another seaside themed watercolour tutorial. And today I'm going to be painting a puffin. Now this is based on a photograph that I took when I was in the Farne Islands. I've got it up here on my iPad, I'm going to be using this as a reference. Now this photo is going to be available on my website and you can download it from there. Uh, I've also produced some line art for this. So I've printed out my little line art puffin. I've printed this out at 70% size because this is an A4 sheet and I've designed it at A4 so you can pr print it out larger if you want but I've scaled mine down because I'm going to do a, a smaller piece of paper. So, uh, so that's printed at 70%. I encourage you to have a go at drawing this yourself if you want to and here's one that I drew freehand based on that photo reference but using the line art is not a cheat, it's a way to get into the painting really quickly and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So to transfer my line art I've got a little bit of masking tape, I've got a pencil, I've got a pen, I'm not going to be drawing on the paper, I'm just going to be using that to trace the image. Um, I've got an eraser and then for the painting I've got my watercolour paints here, some clean water and uh, a piece of paper towel. I've also got a couple of brushes out, so I've got, these are both Princeton Neptune brushes and I've got a size 4 and a size 10 pointed round brushes. If I grab any other brushes during the course of the painting I will put in the description box what I've used. So I'm going to move my paints out of the way for now and I'm going to prepare my page. I think I'm going to tape it down because I want to paint all the way up to the edge of the paper but I want a nice white border all the way around so I'm going to tape this to the table. I'm just going to trim this down a little bit so I can see where I'm going to place it better. And I only really need the bit with the puffin on it. There we go. And then the next thing I'm going to do is turn this over and scribble on the back with pencil. Now I only need to go over the lines where the, the line art is, so you, what you can do, if you can't see the lines through your paper you can hold up to a window and that helps you to see where everything is. But I'm just going to roughly go around where the puffin is and I think that's going to be good. So now I can turn this over and decide where I'm going to place it on my on my paper. I think that's probably quite good. I think slightly off to one side is good. Um, and then I'm just going to use a little bit of masking tape to hold it in place. And now I'm just going to go over all the lines uh, with my pen. You could use the pencil for this but I find the pen's sharper and it gets you a kind of a slightly brighter line, a clearer line. I want to make sure I've transferred all the lines so I can just lift up one piece of the masking tape and just see um, how well it's transferred and it's very faint on there. You can go over again with a, a sharper uh, line if you want to but um, I think that's enough for me and what I'm going to do is um, is once I'm, once I'm happy and I've got all my lines I'm just going to check I've got everything in there yeah I'm going to take this off. I can take my pencil and go back over the lines now anything that's not looking very distinct or very sharp I can make sure I've got in nice and strongly. Anything that's a little too dark now I can just press my eraser in and get rid of any unwanted dark pencil lines. So for this painting, mostly for the puffin, I'm going to be using a really a quite small brush with a nice fine point because there's lots of detail in there and I want to capture all of that. 
and then I've got a bigger brush which I'm going to paint for the background for the rocks and the sea and I really want them to like not go over the puffin so I'm going to start by painting the sea in first and I'm just going in with clean water on my brush and just carefully going around the outside of the puffin. Now you could use masking fluid and cover over the whole of the puffin. So let's flick the water out to the side. The paint in between his legs. And then up to the top of the page. There's a tiny little bit in there in between the little sand eels that he's got and his neck. So I'm going to get that into. And it doesn't matter if there are some little white areas in your sea because that's just going to add to the effect. It's going to make it look like there's some like nice kind of highlights in the water. And then I can take some colour and drop it in there. And I'm just going to use this blue straight from the palette. And um, this is in Dantherine blue, but a French ultramarine or something else like that would work just as well. And I'm just dropping this colour in and swishing it. So I've got some nice dark areas. And let's have another one here. And make sure that if you put like a dark swoosh in, it goes all the way through, so to out to the other side. Like that. This colour spreads around and does some interesting things. And I'm just going to let it do its thing. Let's put another swoosh in up here. And then I want slightly lighter ones and further apart as they kind of go further back. And you can keep working this while it's still wet and just adding in more and more swooshes and stripes. I want a really kind of dark area here and here. And I can probably go too far with this, so at some point I really need to stop and just let it dry and see what all of these colours do once they kind of spread themselves out. So my sea is now dry and I'm going to um, do some of the detail on the puffin. I could do the rocks next, but I don't think it matters so much there because there's not so much that I'm going to overlap on the feet. Um, so I want some black. Um, and I've got this blue in my palette, I may as well use it. So if I mix, I don't have any blacks in my palette, um, I'm going to mix some red and some yellow into it. And that will give me a greyish colour. And I've got a little scrap of paper and I can just test the colour on there. That's not too bad, it's quite nice and dark. I think it is a little bit green. So to counteract the green, I can add a little bit more red. And I just keep going and testing the colour until I'm happy with it. OK, I've got a good neutral black here. And I'm just going to start painting in all of the black areas on the puffin. So around his neck here. And I'm just using the point on this very little brush to get into these corners.
fill the whole area. And then assume, assuming my C is completely dry, I can add a couple of little tiny flakes of feathers out to the side. I'm going to do the top of the head now. And colour on my brush is kind of running out a little bit, but that's probably a good thing because around here it gets quite light. There's more of a highlight on this bit here. There we go. And then there's a couple of bits at the side where there's just a few little feathers from the wings. Like that. The other thing I want to do is the eye. So it's a nice like triangle shape. And then there's just like a little flick at the top. And then like a line coming off the bottom. There we go. So for the beak, I've got a few different colours there. The beak's really interesting. It's got all of these different sections in that are all really interesting, different colours, and they're lovely. Um, apparently, uh, puffins only have these coloured beaks during the breeding season, and they're much darker um, and less colourful um, during the rest of the year. So, But yeah, but this photo is one of mine, and it was from a trip to the Fine Islands. Uh, where there's loads and loads of breeding puffins and arctic terns and gannets and um, what else were there? Uh, razorbills and uh, guillemots, um, absolutely beautiful birds. So I've got some yellow in here and I'm going to make an orange by adding some red to it and I'm going to paint the end of the beak here in this nice bright orange Just like a little kind of curved triangle. You, can, you may see that I've left a little bit of a gap around it, that's because there's like a brighter area on the top and, um, and lighter areas where it's kind of more yellowy and I'll be putting those in later. If you struggle with the detail here, you might want to think about painting this a little bit bigger. So it just gives you a bit more room to, to move the brush around. And then I've got a nice blue section in here. You might actually use some cerulean blue to make it a little kind of lighter and brighter. And again, it's like a kind of curved triangle. And I'm going to be very careful and leave a little gap on either side. That I can fill in later. While I've got this orange on my palette, I can paint his legs. So, which I think may be a little bit more yellow. And I love this kind of knock-kneed stance he's got, where his feet are kind of pointing inwards. And it, I'll be putting some kind of detail and um, giving these kind of some shape and shadow and stuff later. 
but at the minute I'm just painting them all in one colour in this orange. And while I'm waiting for these areas to dry, I can put in some shadow. So I've got this grey, this black here, which I can, which I used for painting the uh, the black plumage. But I don't want anything that dark for painting the areas of kind of shadow and feathers on the body. So I've just added a little bit of water into that, and that's giving me a much more kind of watery mix. And for that, I can give the body some volume. So I'm looking at the, my, my photo um, and just seeing that the light is coming from this side so the, the areas of shadow on the body around here and then on the head as well. And I'm just going to paint in some feathery strokes. There's definitely a shadow where the kind of the leg meets the body. It's almost like a line up there. And then the same on this side, but not as much because this side's not as dark. And there's actually like a little line of shadow in there. Maybe not quite that much take out a little bit. And then there's quite a bit of shadow underneath. I think my shadow is maybe a little dark. So I'm just going to go over it with paper towel. So I think that's enough on the body. Um, there's actually maybe a little bit more under the legs there. I keep saying that's enough and then keep go keeping going. <laughs> the next thing is the head and there's a little bit of shadow just behind the eye a little bit here and underneath like the, the jawline and I can take this shadow right onto the black area too and I think that's it. What I can also do is just add a little bit of shadow down the right hand side of each of the legs and a little bit kind of in between the webbing of these toes. Switching back to my really small brush now, I'm going to do the wee fishies and I want them to be blue but I might add a little bit of the a bit of the grey into it just so they're not as bright as the sea. And these are kind of, they're stripey, they've got like, they're dark on one side and then they're really kind of bright and shiny on the other. So I'm going to try and show that by painting a dark stripe. A dark stripe on that one. I think this needs to be more grey because it's looking very similar to the sea at the minute. A dark stripe on this one in the middle. 
and a dark stripe on this one on the right hand side and that comes all the way down there. And then all I'm going to do is wash my brush, just take off a lot of the excess water so it's just slightly damp and then I'm going to run my brush alongside that dark stripe that I just put in and just allow it to spread and soften a little bit. I know it's quite tight in there to get all that detail in but actually if you just put a few kind of stripes in here it gives the sense of there being fish in the in the mouth and you don't need to you don't you don't need to kind of go into too much detail because your eye will make up the make up the difference. It kind of like it knows what should be there and so it kind of makes it up for you. For the rest of the beak I'm gonna use the yellowish side of this little puddle of yellowy orange but yeah you can just take some yellow and mix a little bit of red into it and I'm going to fill in all of the areas on here. Make sure everything's dry first and then I'm just going to go around very carefully and paint this lovely yellow stripe. and underneath too. There's also, this is getting a bit a bit too much really, he's got a yellow lip that's stretching around this lovely fish here. So I'm just going to paint that in as well. And then the final thing I'm going to do on the puffin is just give a little bit more darkness to the centre of the eye. So I'm just going in with another layer of that black just to really deepen that centre. And that's it for the puffin. Next I'm going to paint the rocks. So I've got this black here and I don't want black rocks, I really want brown ones. So if I add a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow into that, that's going to make me more of a neutrally brown colour. So let's test that on here, see what that looks like. It's maybe a bit pinky, so maybe a little bit more yellow. That's better. And I'm going to just paint in some random shapes. I want to make sure I go round his feet, don't paint over them. If there's light areas and darker areas that's absolutely fine. And then further down I'm going to use the brush on its side so I get more of that kind of dry brush effect. And then I can just put some little marks in here just indicating that there's some kind of interesting shapes in there from the rocks. We can mix in some different colours so we can put some blues and greens in there you can even take your paper towel and scrunch it up and get some interesting shapes by taking away some of the colour. A final thing is that I want a little bit more shadow on these rocks, not rocks, on the puffin's feet. Um, I'll make sure they're dry and I'm going to use more of a red tone this time just to make them stand out a little bit. So just on the right side, a little bit of a blob coming down the leg to make it look like it's kind of wider at that kind of knee bit. And then little bits in between 
the toes where the kind of webbing is. And I think that looks a bit better. So there is my Happy Puffin painting. I really hope that you've enjoyed this and if you paint along with me I'd love to see what you come up with. If you want to share your work with me you can post it on Instagram and use Lou Rachel Davis as either as a hashtag or as the handle in the description and I will see it and I look forward to seeing what you make of this. So I hope you have fun painting and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks very much, bye bye!